Welcome to the final program in Blue Hill Box 2020 Virtual Festival. I'm Marcia Gronewald Sly, founder and executive director of Blue Hill Bach. We hope you've enjoyed this series of events we've assembled for this festival. And if you haven't seen the other programs, videos will be available on our website. There's quite a range of programs, all featuring our incredible musicians and other friends of Blue Hill Bach who have risen to the challenge of creating virtual events to share with you during this time of isolation. I'm pleased to introduce this final program, a preview of Bach's Christmas Oratorio, which we'll perform next summer as part of our grand 10th anniversary celebration. Festival music director John Finney is well known to our audience for his conducting, playing, and his insightful Bach's Lunch lecture demonstrations. In this program, John will explore the Passion Chorale and how Bach and others have used this timeless melody throughout history. I want to thank John, our artistic director, Steve Hammer, our young artist fellow, Christopher Andaloro, and the Blue Hill Bach Chorus and Orchestra for the hard work they've put into making this program. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for joining us for this virtual Blue Hill Bach Festival. We do look forward to the time when we can meet in person to perform. And one of the great works we hope to perform is the monumental Christmas Oratorio by Johann Sebastian Bach. Now, the Christmas Oratorio contains about three hours of wonderful music, including gorgeous arias, exciting choruses, beautiful chorales, stunning orchestrations. I could go on and on. I could probably talk for hours about that music, but I won't. Today, I'm only going to talk about one aspect of the Christmas Oratorio, and that is Bach's use of the Passion Chorale. The Passion Chorale is the chorale that we associate with the words in English, O sacred head now wounded, or in German, O haupt voll blut und wunden. And that's a chorale that we hear usually on Good Friday. Just a word about terminology. Bach used the term oratorio to refer to only three of his compositions, his Christmas oratorio, his Easter oratorio, and his Ascension oratorio. And what makes an oratorio different from a cantata in Bach's terminology is that an oratorio has a self-contained plot. In other words, it tells a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. I'm going to change the subject now and talk a little bit about a very beautiful melody. In 1601, the German composer Hans Leo Hassler published a collection of instrumental and vocal pieces called Lustgarten Neuer Teutsche Gesang Balletti Galliarden und Intraden, or A Pleasure Garden of New German Songs and Dances. 
The title page of this publication is really beautiful, and I hope you can see it. Um, I love how the publication date, 1601, figures so prominently on the title page in Roman numerals. So you'll see MDCI, 1601, split over the two sides of the title page. The songs in this collection are love songs and drinking songs and songs about singing and songs about dancing and pure dance music to be played by instruments. One of the fun songs that I really enjoyed reading the text of is a song about the joy of singing, and it has this refrain. Singt allerseits zur rechten und zur linken, denn wer nicht singt, der soll auch nicht mittrinken. Which means, hey, join in the singing, everybody, you on the right and you on the left, because if you don't join in the singing, you won't be allowed to join in the drinking either. I'd like you to hear one of the songs from Hassler's collection. This is the song, Mein Gemüt ist mir verwirret. It's a rather sad song with a very poignant melody. It's sung by one who is lovesick for a beautiful maiden. He's miserable because he's pining for her and he knows he's not good enough for her. The translation of the first line, Mein Gemüt ist mir verwirret, is roughly, my mind is confused, or more colloquially, oh, I am so mixed up. So listen now to this performance of the first verse. You'll hear it played first by Grant Herod on the lute, and then sung by Ian Pomerantz. And you'll notice that for part of the singing, Ian holds up a copy of the original print from 1601. Here now the first verse of Mein Gemüt ist mir verwirret. It was only about 12 years after Hassler's secular love song, Mein Gemüt ist mir verwirret, published in 1601, that that melody was borrowed and set to a poem by Christoph Knoll, Herzlich tut mich verlangen. That was a poem that was written during the plague of 1599, and it's what's referred to in German as a geistliches Sterbelied, or a spiritual song for the dying. The text begins, Herzlich tut mich verlangen nach einem selgen end, which means, I dearly desire a blessed end to my life. And the text continues, because here on earth I am surrounded by misery and distress, I long to depart this world, and I long for the joys of heaven. I think it says a lot about the poignancy of Hustler's melody, that even though he conceived it for a secular love song, the poignancy of that melody fits perfectly with the sacred words of a spiritual song for the dying, longing for the end of life, and the joys of heaven. Only a few decades after Hassler's melody was borrowed for Herzlich tut mich verlangen, it was borrowed again, this time to be sung to the words by the poet Paul Gerhardt. Now Gerhardt had translated a very long Latin poem from the Middle Ages called 
Salve mundi salutare, a contemplation of the passion of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. The last stanza of that very long poem, Salve caput cruentatum, became, in Gerhardt's translation, O hauptvoll blut und wunden, which we sometimes sing in English as O sacred head now wounded. So already by the middle of the 17th century, Hassler's melody was closely associated with several chorale texts, Herzlich tut mich verlangen, the text about longing for death and the joys of heaven, and O hauptvoll blut und wunden, a text contemplating the passion and death of Jesus Christ. About 50 years later, by the time Bach was composing his cantatas, I imagine that most people would not have been aware that this melody was originally a secular love song. And in fact, hearing just a few notes of the melody would bring to mind one of these chorale texts, perhaps Herzlich tut mich verlangen, about longing for death and the joys of heaven, or O hauptvoll blut und wunden, a text contemplating the passion and death of Jesus Christ. It's interesting to think about how a melody can become so closely associated with a text or a subject that hearing only a few notes of the melody, people will make a connection. For example, if I were to sing, and I apologize for my singing voice, but if I were to sing this melody, Da 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 It might bring to mind a patriotic event that you attended where my country tis of thee was sung. Or perhaps it might actually conjure up an image of Westminster Abbey in London resounding with the voices of 8,000 people at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II singing, God save the Queen. And just to remind you, by the time that Bach was writing his cantatas in the 18th century, Hustler's melody, which was originally a secular love song, was closely associated with several chorale texts, including Herzlich tut mich verlangen, a text about dying and longing for death and the joys of heaven, and also O hauptvoll blut und wunden, a text contemplating the passion and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. From this point, I'm going to refer to Hustler's melody as the Passion Chorale, just to simplify matters. And I'd like to speak a little bit about how Bach incorporated the Passion Chorale into a number of his cantatas. One cantata I'd like to mention is cantata number 161, Komm du süße Todesstunde. The earliest version of that cantata is from about 1715. The first movement of that cantata is an aria for alto who sings, Komm du süße Todesstunde, or Come Sweet Hour of Death, a text about longing for death and the joys of heaven to come. Very much like the text of Herzlich tut mich verlangen. And above the beautiful melody that the alto sings, Bach adds as a counterpoint the melody of the Passion Chorale. Thank you. 
The last movement of Cantata 161 is a straightforward four-part setting of the Passion Chorale using another verse of the chorale text from Herzlich tut mich verlangen. And in that version, the four voices of the chorus sing the chorale in four-part harmony, and above that, Bach adds a beautiful filigree of melody played by the two recorders. Bach also used the Passion Chorale in his setting of the St. Matthew Passion. And in fact, this is probably why we've come to refer to this chorale as the Passion Chorale. A Passion is a kind of an oratorio that tells the story of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the events leading up to it. In Bach's setting of the St. Matthew Passion, the narration is sung by the tenor soloist called the Evangelist. And the parts of Jesus, Pontius Pilate, Peter, and other characters are assigned to other solo voices. Bach interrupts the telling of the story after almost every scene with either a chorale or an aria, or sometimes both. And the words of the aria or the chorale will reflect on the action that has just taken place. In 12 instances in the St. Matthew Passion, Bach has straightforward four-part chorale settings. And of those 12 settings, five of them are the Passion Chorale. Bach carefully chooses the key and the harmonization for each setting of the Passion Chorale to reflect the mood and the character of the text. He reserves the highest and most intense key for his setting of the actual words, O Haupt voll Blut und Wunden, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. And I'd like you to now listen to this recording of O Haupt voll Blut und Wunden, sung for this occasion by members of the Blue Hill Bach Festival Chorus. And now back to the Christmas oratorio. 
Just to remind you, Bach's Christmas Oratorio consists of six separate cantatas, each one to be heard on a different day of the Christmas season. And as is typical of Bach's cantatas, each of these cantatas contains several chorales. Bach's congregation would certainly have expected to hear at least one chorale in each of the cantatas. And the first one occurs quite early. It's in the first cantata, the cantata meant to be heard on Christmas Day, and it's the fifth movement of that cantata. The text is the first verse of an Advent chorale, Wie soll ich dich empfangen? How shall I receive thee? I'm guessing that Bach's congregation, if they looked at the libretto for the cantata that morning, would have said, oh yeah, wie soll ich dich empfangen? That's an Advent chorale. I'd expect to hear that in a cantata for Christmas Day. But I bet they would have been expecting to hear it to the traditional melody, which was composed by Johann Krüger. And it's a rather cheerful melody in a major key. Forgive my singing voice. I'm going to sing it for you. Wie soll ich dich empfangen und wie begegne ich dir? O aller Welt verlangen, o meiner Seelen zier. O Jesu, Jesu setze mir selbst die Fackel bei, damit was dich ergötze, mir kund und wissend sei. But now, listen to the Blue Hill Bach Festival Chorus singing the setting that Bach actually wrote for Wie soll ich dich empfangen as the fifth movement of the first cantata in the Christmas Oratorio. As you can hear, instead of using the rather cheerful tune by Johann Krüger for Wie soll ich dich empfangen, Bach chooses to set those words to the melody of the Passion Chorale. So imagine, on Christmas Day, hearing an Advent text sung to a melody so closely associated with the crucifixion. Bach does this as a kind of foreshadowing to remind the congregation that Jesus, this newborn baby in the manger, will, as a grown man, suffer and die on the cross to atone for the sins of humankind. This kind of foreshadowing is not unprecedented in accounts of the Nativity. Even in the biblical account, one of the gifts of the three Magi is myrrh. Myrrh was associated with the anointing of kings, but also with the anointing of a body for burial. And in one of the accounts of the Passion of Christ, myrrh is used to anoint his body for burial. Bach uses the Passion Chorale one more time in the Christmas Oratorio, and it's as the last movement. It's the last movement of the sixth cantata, which was written to be heard on January 6th, Epiphany. The text is a verse from a Christmas chorale, 
ihr Christen aus Erkoren. And the text of this verse, nun seid ihr wohl gerochen. If you look at it, you might think this doesn't look very Christmassy, but look at the last two lines. Bei Gott hat seine Stelle das menschliche Geschlecht, which means it is next to God that humankind has its place. I think that's a real expression of the mystery of the incarnation, that God became a member of the human race in the person of Jesus, and humankind has its place next to God. Bach's congregation would have been familiar with this text, but again, I think they would have expected to hear it sung to the melody of the Christmas chorale, Ihr Christen aus Erkoren, and would probably not have expected to hear it sung to the melody of the Passion Chorale. I think this is kind of a flashback and another foreshadowing. It's a flashback because certainly Bach's congregation would have remembered that just 12 days earlier, on Christmas Day, they heard the Advent Chorale, Wie soll ich dich empfangen, sung to the melody of the Passion Chorale as a reminder that the newborn baby Jesus would grow up to become the savior of humankind through his passion and death on the cross. And it's another foreshadowing that Bach gives us because we hear now a Christmas text sung to the melody of the Passion Chorale. But in a stroke of pure genius, Bach adds yet another touch by enveloping this Passion Chorale melody in the most glorious and exuberant orchestration, including trumpets and timpani and fanfares in music that is resplendent with the glory of Christ's resurrection. So Bach gives us a Christmas text sung to a Passion Chorale melody but enveloped in music that is purely in the character of Easter. Members of the Blue Hill Bach Festival Orchestra and Chorus have recorded this wonderful movement, and you'll hear it in just a moment. I'd like to leave you with that glorious music, and so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you once again for joining us for this virtual Blue Hill Bach Festival. And now, the glorious final movement of Bach's Christmas Oratorio. <laughs>
Du stehst seufzer 